Do you have special artwork from your children or grandchildren or special photos that you aren't quite sure just how to preserve? Today I have for you a simple but beautiful technique that will preserve those memories forever in style. Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another Friday Findings video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. When the folks at Resin Obsession reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try their super clear casting resin, I said, of course I do. I love to try out new products. And they suggested I try their tutorial for how to turn a child's artwork into a keepsake pendant. And that sounded like a lot of fun. This is a piece of art that my granddaughter sent me some time ago. I absolutely love her drawing, but it's a little large to keep around, even on the fridge it's kind of huge so what I did first was I snapped a picture with my phone you can also scan artwork whatever you need to do to get it into a computer so you can edit it I just cleaned up the edges that you know the, the wrinkles on the paper that would show then I found a couple of molds that I wanted to preserve the piece of artwork in these are little pendant molds with a hole already in them you can also buy ones without a hole and just use a glue on veil so I printed out the artwork in a few different sizes so I could try and see which one would look best. Because the scale is small, I did enhance the color just a little bit, just made it a little bit more saturated and increased the contrast just so that the piece would show up. Then you can trim your pieces out and place them in your mold, deciding which one you think looks best. You do want to have just a little bit of space around your piece, all the way around the edges, and you'll see why. Then it's time to mix up some resin. I've got a piece of wax paper I'm going to put down here just to protect my work surface. Every resin is a little bit different, and resin is one of those things you cannot wing it, you should not wing it, you need to be precise. They all come with exact directions for their specific kind of resin, and you really need to follow those directions to the T. This one, for example, is a two-part resin, but you mix two parts of A to one part of B. You can kind of tell by the, uh, the difference in the size of the bottles. And some are by weight and some are by volume. So you want to be very careful that you follow those directions exactly. For example, this is an eight ounce bottle and a two ounce bottle of hardener to go with it but this is two ounces and this is eight ounces so obviously this is less dense so if I did it by weight the proportions wouldn't work out properly another thing about this resin they say a minimum of 15 milliliters total must be mixed in order for curing to occur so I you might have to mix a little bit more than you think you need in which case just have some extra molds on hand maybe plan to do several projects at a time the amount of stirring is important. Stir carefully for two minutes, at least two minutes. This stuff I just love. Look at this has been sitting for not even five minutes since I stirred it and all the bubbles are gone. This is a casting resin. It's not for doming where you want to get that nice dome like a cabochon look. This is for casting. So that's why it's a little bit less viscous and the bubbles pop more readily, which is wonderful. Because I'm working white on white, I mean, clear things, I'm just going to put this piece of colored paper under here to help you see what's going on. What I have is a piece of clear packing tape, a little bit bigger than my printed artwork. I'm laying that sticky side up. Put your artwork down on it. I see it. Is that, oh, that dirt? I saw a speck of dirt, but that's on the paper. Okay. Try to keep it as clean as possible. Put your artwork on the tape and then get another piece of tape and put that over top. I'm making sure to not get fingerprints on any of the areas that are going to be touching my artwork. So the art is sandwiched in between the two layers of packing tape. You really want to pay attention to these edges and press out any air bubbles. The idea is that 
This is sealing the paper in so the resin cannot get to the paper because what will happen if the resin can get to the paper it will soak into the fibers and change it and discolor it. So really press hard and make sure you have those sealed very well. She mentions that she could also have sealed it with a couple layers of glue but then you have to wait for the glue to dry. Now you're going to trim leaving a little tiny border of tape outside the edge of your paper. Now you could do this with artwork, of course you could do it with photos, even if you had a pretty piece of scrapbook paper, put some pressed flowers on it, some kind of ephemera like tickets or you know, something special that you have. There's so many things you could do this with. But I think it's awfully fun to make my granddaughter's piece of artwork something that I can carry with me anywhere. Put it on a keychain or a pendant. So now that's all trimmed with a border of tape all the way around. Now I have my mold ready. I have it on the wax paper so I can move it without making too much of a mess, hopefully. And I'm going to fill this mold about halfway with resin. Make sure to get it in all the corners. I've really been very happy with this resin that it does not hold on to bubbles, hardly at all. The next thing the instructions tell you to do is to take whatever that it is that you're going to mold, in this case the piece of artwork, and dip it in the resin. A pair of tweezers is very handy for this. This would go also for things like dried flowers, This helps make sure that you don't have air bubbles. And another way to make sure you don't have air bubbles is to put it in at an angle. So I'm going to slide that in. I don't know if that was very good. Slide that in at an angle so that you don't trap air bubbles. Make sure you get it nice and straight. If you have any air bubbles, which I've got like one. This is like my favorite thing to do. I love doing this. I love watching them pop. They will just pop once you hit them with the lighter. I've also heard you can blow with a straw. <laughs> blow with your breath, but I think the lighter is much more fun. <laughs> now you let that cure. Now if you want the whole thing just encased in clear resin, then go ahead and continue to fill up the mold with your clear resin. What you'll end up with is something like this. You can see that paper is sandwiched right in the middle there, and there's my piece with my artwork. This article mentions that she mixed some white pigment in with her resin and then for the back layer, the second layer, used white and that I think looking at this and I can see the back of this, I can see where white would be a very nice finish to this. You can mix pigments in but again you'll have to do it in a second layer otherwise it'll just mix in and not be right. And I'll show you some examples of that. These are pieces I made when I had leftover resin from another project. I mixed colorant like this green or this blue in with my resin and then filled the mold about halfway. But you can see what I mean that if I did white on the back here I think it would finish this off nicely but it's also kind of cute just free floating. While we're waiting for that to cure I just want to take a moment to give a huge thank you to all of you who have decided to support me on Patreon. It is really a big deal to me. I don't know that I would be doing YouTube videos if I didn't have patron support. And if you're a regular here and you enjoy my videos you might consider doing that yourself. It makes a difference and don't forget that patrons have the opportunity to get up to two bonus videos every month. 
So it's been 12 hours and the resin is all cured and you might notice that there's more here than there was because I didn't want to waste that extra resin. Like I said, for this resin you have to mix at least 15 milliliters in order for it to cure. And that 15 milliliters actually halfway filled nine of these silicone molds. What I did was that after I poured my clear resin, I then tinted the remaining resin in the cup with some gold pearly tint. I didn't really love that color, so then I added some blue to make green. And then I added more blue to make a different shade of green. So if you plan it out well, you can get more than one color. And these are all half filled and ready for me to put different things in there, like the flowers, like I showed earlier. Now it's time to mix up a, another batch of resin and tint that to cover the back of my piece. You can actually get a look at it here. So I will be adding color to the back of it and it will provide a nice frame for the artwork. I've got my resin all mixed and I am actually going to do a couple different colors. I've got plenty here. I used a bunch of this already. I'll show you later what I did with the clear. I, I just hate to waste it. Uh, it. It's kind of a pain, I think, having to mix up so much. So I always try to find uses for it. So this is the tint. I think it says to not exceed 5% of what you mixed. Um, so far I haven't had any problems. Well that's a pretty blue. Can you just mix that in? I'm going to go ahead and fill this cavity halfway with the blue in advance of another project. And I want to make sure I have plenty. I think I want my backing for my cat. Since the cat is green, I want the backing to be green. So I'll add a little yellow. Start with just a couple drops. You can always add more, but you can't take it out. That's maybe not quite enough. And these are um, resin tints from Art Resin. And they have balls in them. They have like a mica sheen, a pearly. So do make sure to mix them up. Shake them well before you use them. That's kind of a pretty soft green. That's a different green than I got with the gold. And now I will fill my mold the rest of the way behind my artwork. And that way that color will make a frame on the front side and just give it a real nice finished look. Make sure we get in all the corners. I don't want to overfill it. So this will be the back of the pendant. I'm sure you already figured that out. I will just use the rest of this to fill in a few more. Don't know what I'll do with them, but there's no point in wasting the resin. You can see from what seems like a pretty tiny amount, 15 milliliters, doesn't sound like much, you can get quite a few of these pieces. I have no idea what I'm going to do with these. Any suggestions? <laughs> Don't forget when you put your resin aside to cure, to put a box upside down over it just to keep any dust or pet hair. So this is the second pouring and we'll just set this aside to cure for another 12 hours. Here we are another 12 hours later and all the pieces have cured. So let's see what we've got. Well, that's kind of cute. There's our thin layer of green for the back and then the clear and the artwork framed nicely. And now you have a piece that you can put on a keychain or a necklace pendant or a zipper pull or something and preserve this special artwork forever. Real quick, I'll just show you what I did with some of these other pieces. I added flowers to those other ones you, I showed you, but these ones I went with seashells and little bits of plants from my garden reminiscent of seaweed and even a little bit of sand. 
I do want to thank the folks at Resin Obsession for sending along the resin. Be watching in the upcoming weeks for a video using this technique to make a bangle bracelet. That will be a lot of fun and very unique. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see a video on how to make these pieces with the seashells and resin. There are actually some tips that I thought of as I was making them that I think would be helpful. Happy creating. Bye-bye.